No, but I can see why you would think that way. I see this brought up often, and there is a lot of friction. I think it stems from misunderstandings about ENFPs, and ENFPs' misunderstandings about themselves. We will start with the perceived fake behavior. The ENFP gets an idea, or sees a movement, and attaches themselves to it. Then, that's all they talk about. They get in your business, they push all these ideas on you, they are super excited about it, this is the most important thing in the world. Then, in about half a year, they reverse their position entirely. Perceived common fake behavior, too. ENFP gets super obsessed with someone, maybe with you. Especially if you're an INFJ, they are keen on getting really obsessed with INFJs out of nowhere. Then, after maybe one or two times talking in which they are playing you up as the best, most important person in the world, it stops. Immediately. No explanation, no nothing. They are just bored of you, they are done with you. Perceived fake behavior three. They like the appearance of something, but not the essence. So they will get an, an idea, a big idea, and it's going to be this, and it'll be that. But the moment you analyze it, the logistics of it, or even the logic of it, and you realize this isn't going to work, this is unfeasible, this isn't what you're claiming it is, it seems like they're just doing it, or they're just talking about it for the appearance of it. And again, this could go as high as a social movement, or as low as pedestalizing a specific value. But in either case, it's unrealistic, it doesn't work, they don't even really hold it up for themselves, seems like they're just doing it for appearances. Now, those are the three most common fake behaviors I see ENFPs do, and I see people criticize ENFPs for doing. And that makes people think ENFPs are fake. Now, when you look at the events, you can see why that would seem fake. But you need to understand the ways ENFPs' brains work. Firstly, when they say something, they mean it. Or they think they mean it. That's the important part. They are FI types. When they have an idea, they tunnel vision on it. And for that moment, for as long as they're interested in it, which probably won't be too long, it is them, 100%. ENFPs have critic FE and inferior SI. They are not thinking about the way their behavior or their obsession looks to other people. And they also aren't thinking about the ways things have turned out for them in the past. They aren't going to think, well, I swapped ideas almost immediately after getting my last big idea. Maybe I'm going to swap ideas again. Maybe I shouldn't get super invested in this. Some do, especially once they get older, but when they are in their 20s and early 30s, they aren't thinking about these things at all. All they're thinking is, this is the next big idea, this is important to me, and I'm going to do something about it. And furthermore, they don't really care how they look when they change ideas. Or if you're an INFJ who got dumped by an ENFP, they don't care about how you feel. They meant what they said when they said it, but now they don't feel that way. You could call that a number of things, but fake isn't one of them. So now we've established from that FI perspective why ENFPs aren't faking it, why they mean what they say. Why, then, are ENFPs always looking for the next idea? And what sort of ideas will they attach themselves to? Well, ENFPs use dominant NE, but more importantly, tertiary TE. They want to keep busy. They want to be doing things. They want their hands on things. They want material. They want action. NE supports that by scanning the world, the big wide world, for all the millions of different things they could be doing or they could find importance in. What's important to understand about TE is it isn't just productivity. It isn't just action. 
FTE in understanding things operates on zeitgeists, lack of a better word. Whatever a group of people are congregating around and believing, ENFPs will think that's the truth. All TE types are like this, but each has a different method of dealing with that it isn't true unless the majority says it or the establishment says it belief. For instance, ENTJ's dominant TE, but importantly, Nemesis TI. They will never get away from the someone with a title is saying this, so it's true thing. But because they have Nemesis TI, they want to feel like they can use TI, and because they have dominant TE, they will compensate with combat. They will fight each other over sources, over validity, trying to prove to themselves and others that they are independent thinkers. But they aren't getting away from the sources thing. They can't just think what they think in a vacuum. INTJs do a similar sort of thing, except they have... They get really morally about things, and they moralize, and... Unlike ENTJs, INTJs are more likely to go with a smaller movement, or a less supported movement, but a still, a still zeitgeisty, everyone is congregating around this idea movement, but everything will be more morally in the way they want to see themselves and all this other dumb shit. ENFPs, on the other hand, will almost always try to be the underdog. But they can't just go their own way. One, because that isn't super interesting to them. They like action. They like being a part of something. But they don't want to be a part of the majority, because fuck the majority. But they need other people around them. They need that supportedness I mentioned of ENTJs. Again, regardless of the validity of the source, but they need a figurehead. They need something to flow their ideas through, or from, or to channel their ideas. They need a person, they need a thing. Like a concrete thing to attach themselves to, or to pull up, or to push up. Tertiary TE. It is a childlike need for something concrete, something ideologically supported by enough people for it to be real, for them to stand behind, for them to push, but not so isolated nobody's there. Nobody gives a shit. Nobody would give a shit. There isn't that TE supportedness, or at least the appearance of TE supportedness. Appearance is everything. They want to go their own way, but they need other people around, so they will attach themselves to subversive movements, to subversive ideas. Ideas that are subversive, but are popular enough, people are congregating around those ideas and fighting for them. So they are always looking for the next subversive movement they can attach themselves to, then inject into other people. It's almost like a cycle. ENFP sees the next big idea. It's a mountain. It's a mountain many people are climbing. Everyone's saying, this is the mountain cool mountain climbers climb. And everyone knows mountain climbers hate the authority, hate the establishment. So knowing that ENFP is going to go out there and climb that mountain. So they get into it, they climb the mountain, they're having a good time, they feel like they're really accomplishing something, they're doing something with their lives, and they're telling everyone about it. Because what's the point of doing something if people can't see it? Then they reach the top of the mountain. The movement, or the idea, peaks. The NFP looks out across the world, got their fists on their hips, proud of themselves, and then they go, God damn, I feel empty. Or did I really just waste however many months on this shit? What is wrong with me? And then they climb down off the mountain, they go home, they sit in their house, and they think about dying. And then they go, I can't keep doing this. This, this non-movement shit is killing me, and all the little things I've been doing to occupy my time are bullshit. I don't like that of myself. I gotta find the next thing to do. And they see the next mountain. Very similar, presented a similar way, and they go, okay, this one's different. This is gonna be the one. And then they do it all over again. 
This seems to be the cycle for most ENFPs until they're in their late 30s. Always looking for the thing worth investing in, worth fighting for. And maybe it's a lack of SI. Maybe it's FI. Maybe it's the TE need for the movement, for the zeitgeist. But everything they do will be picking something up, thinking this is going to be the thing that's the most important thing, the thing that matters. That could be a movement, that could be a trade, that could be a person, it could be anything. And they'll think that that is the best thing ever. This is what they need to care about. And they will put everything behind it, talk it up, push it. But soon after, and when I say soon, that could be a couple days, it could be a couple months, maybe it could be two years even. Almost never any longer than that. They will go, this isn't the thing that mattered. And I feel stupid for wasting my time on it. How could I have been that stupid? So then, without caring about the consequences, they drop it and go on to the next thing. The point here being, if you are an ENFP, you gotta realize how that looks to other people. Jumping onto or into something, saying that this is the most important thing ever, saying that everyone needs to care about this, and you're gonna throw everything behind it just to drop it soon after and do it all over again with the next thing. If you aren't an ENFP, you gotta realize they aren't faking it. They aren't grifting you. They are trying to find anything that matters in the world. And they keep coming up disappointed. That doesn't mean you should let them take you for a ride, because they will. ENFPs like using force, using power, to move things along. And when they're done with it, they'll discard everything. You shouldn't let that happen to you, but you also shouldn't hold that drive against them. They aren't doing it maliciously. But back to ENFPs for a moment. Before you repeat the cycle again, ask yourself, are you chasing the dragon again? Or is this something you can dedicate yourself to long term? And if it's the latter, do you need to put everything you have behind it? Do you need to tell everyone? Do you need to try to get other people involved? If it's something you can dedicate yourself to long term, you probably don't need all that energy. You probably don't need all that force. Just stick with it and see it through. Maybe the reason that cycle keeps repeating is because you are throwing everything behind it thinking things will be different this time and they never are because they almost never will be. And of course, there is always variation in individual types. Everyone is different. But the cycle of this is something I need to do. I'm gonna put all my money and all my time behind it. Only for them to end up disappointed then do it again and again and again is pretty common for ENFPs. That doesn't make them fake. I don't know what you would call it, but fake isn't one of them. Forgot to mention, yes, this cycle makes ENFPs very productive, very useful. This, the objective of this video was to explain what's going on in the ENFPs' heads, because if you haven't noticed, quite a few people have contempt for ENFPs over this. So, just putting that out there. But that about rippity wraps this one up. I hope you enjoyed watching, because I certainly enjoyed making it. ENFPs aren't fake. They are something, but they are not fake. I wish I understood TE a bit better. It's not just productivity. There is an entire worldview built into TE that is hard to tap into. I can see the way it works, but I can't explain it right, and that's irritating, because I want to be able to explain it right. I feel like I need to be able to explain it right. Probably because I have Nemesis TE, right? Always arguing with it. Great function, but goddamn is it aggravating.
like if you enjoyed because that helps me out a lot subscribe if you haven't because we do this shit sometimes and comment your thoughts because I love hearing from you are you an ENFP what are your experiences with this cycle do you have any things people might want to know about the ENFP cycle thing why do you throw so many things behind things when you do them especially when they don't or they almost never turn out right or you jump around again those are a lot of questions we have a lot of fun on this channel so much fun in fact you can charge it up in a mobile charging thing and charge it up with a lot of fun and take it with you wherever you go but that's how much fun we have on this channel, and I look forward to doing this with you guys again in the future.